Hi guys, today we're gonna look at another free resource on Azure and that's Azure Functions. Now Azure Functions is free on Azure within limits. So most of the time you have to pay for it if you're using uh, the consumption-based model or if you're using provision throughput. But within the context of a, of a, a consumption model, there's a, a, a specific grant that you get for a given number of requests per month and a certain amount of execution time per month. So I think it's like 40,000 gigabit seconds is how they measure that. It's a function of CPU time and, and memory uh, over time. And then you can have up to a million requests against that time. As long as you stay within those limits, then you should be fine for a, any given application. And that is generally going to be good enough for a lot of low end websites, typically like my website, which I'm not getting tons and tons of traffic on. Uh, but I still have a, a function back in to provide some of the back end services for my website. Now, there's another free way it can run it uh, on Azure, and that's to use the API back end within the context of an Azure Static Web App. Now, the uh, the API backend for an Azure Static Web App is based on functions, but it has a limited scope of what you can use for bindings. So basically, you can use HTTP bindings for that. So you can create a, an API backend to do some basic features on a website. So that's what that is for. So both of these are free ways to use Azure Functions on Azure. And depending on what you want to do, it depends on which one you choose. But I'm going to show you uh, my website as an example of this because I've used uh, functions to automate some of that functionality. I'm going to show you the static web app for my front end, and then I'm going to show you the back end and show you some code that goes with it. Nothing too fancy, but it is an example of how you can use Azure for free using functions. So the front end of my web app is using a Azure Static Web App to host it. I'm on the free tier. Now you can have API backends for this. I, I currently don't have any because uh, this is where you would put those that are part of the Static Web Apps. I actually have my APIs on a function app um, because I'm doing some other stuff that you can't do with the APIs here. But all I have to say is this particular uh, backend API is something that you can program as a function and it hooks up to an Azure Static Web App. I'm just using it for the static hosting aspect of it, which basically just gives me a place to stick a bunch of HTML that is generated. Now, uh, you can see here that I have all the source on GitHub and GitHub is the backend for basically taking all of the content and merging it into a template using a GitHub action. And then it publishes it to an Azure Static Web App. And if uh, I do that on GitHub, I make the change there, it just triggers the action and it, it shows up a few minutes later on my website. So the, the website here is pretty straightforward. It's just static content. I'm using a pretty minimalist design here. Um, and it just has uh, some functionality behind some of the static content that you can use um, as part of the, the actions that are driven by the APIs. And I have two of those that I'm gonna uh, demonstrate here. And one of them is this one right here. This is just a short story I wrote. Now, as part of this, you can enter in an email address and hit submit. And then that basically goes out to a function that then goes out to a blob storage, loads the rest of the story, and then drops it into the, the, the form here uh, or the page here as part of the content. Now, as part of that email, it basically is subscribing to the, the email newsletter um, so you can get updates and stuff like that. And you get a free copy of the novel just by using that little um, function app right there. And so it's doing some things in the back end. I'm not going to show you that code, but it's just using Node.js and it resides on uh, this particular function app. I actually have two behind this because I've been playing with some different features of, of Node.js, which is the function app here. And then another one that I have as a .NET web app that is using that one. Um, so this one right here uh, basically uses this Git story right here. And then I add some other things like PayPal integration. I used to sell books on my website. So you could order the book online and then it would use PayPal to pay for it. And then it would do a webhook call back to my web app, my website. And then it would take the ebook and bundle it up for you and send you a link. Uh, that you could use to download the, the the ebook that you purchased, but I don't I don't have that turned on anymore because I didn't want to maintain uh, any kind of inventory. But you could also buy print books, and that's why I turned it off. Everything is on Amazon now, but I still have that functionality there. Another one is Mailchimp right here. Mailchimp will still email you an e an ebook if you if you go to my website, uh, you fill out an email uh, on Mailchimp. It will actually. Um, subscribed using MailChimp, but then the MailChimp has an API in the back end that calls a webhook, which is right here. And the webhook will then uh, 
get the email address and then send a link to download the the ebook for uh, Shadow of the Demon, my first novel. So just some custom functionality I was using to play with some of these APIs here. Now, on my website, there's also some uh, contact form. Now, the con this is a contact form, which is nothing particularly novel. It also has a CAPTCHA associated with it. Now, I originally used um, CAPTCHA from Google, but I was getting a lot of spam through that because it wasn't able to detect a lot of the stuff. So I basically just said, I'm not going to use Google's CAPTCHA anymore. I'm going to write my own. And because I did this, I ain't got a single piece of spam. And mostly because this is obscure. It's something I wrote, and it's not something that is a widely available CAPTCHA, but obscurity in this case prevents me from getting a lot of spam. So if you have uh, my form out there, you can put in something here, but if you don't you know, actually get the CAPTCHA right, um, then uh, you're not gonna be able to send me uh, anything through this. So, um, so far it's worked pretty well. And so this particular uh, function right here basically uses um, a, a backend that I wrote using .NET. I use C Sharp to write this function app. And it generates this right here. So that image is not, that's not text, it's just an image. And um, the back end for this one actually generates an image. When you click on the page, it generates this image and then sends it back uh, to the page and the page then puts it into this image right here. And then you can uh, enter the text, right? Um, enter the text. So 326 would be this one right here. Now the text is embedded in the image, so you couldn't just read that, but you have to you know, physically type it in. And then you would fill out the form. And then if you hit submit, it calls another API that is a typical uh, API for handling a, a form like this. And it basically just crafts an email and emails me. Uh, nothing special there. That's been around since the early dark days of the web. Now, CAPTCHA is nothing special either, but the code is something that I wrote. It's completely custom. So I figured I'd show you the code. It's nothing um, nothing that's going to blow your mind, but it, it is certainly uh, something that is useful. Um, and I've published it on the uh, my website. So basically, it's just using a library to generate an image. So it's using some data. It gets the, um, the background color right there. It gets... Um, from uh, it loads a font, uh, then it sets the font size, generates the cat, the size of the image, generates some uh, random numbers, and then it uses those numbers to put those digits into the image. Once it's um, generated the image, it actually creates the bitmap and then saves it as a JPEG. Uh, it gets the bit image for for it, and then after that, uh, it basically uh, turns that uh, that image into um, an encoded data, and then um, then those images, those digits, it writes to a temp file, like uh, into the temp folder on the on the particular host, whatever this might be, uh, a short lived file, and then uh, returns the image back to the uh, calling client as a part of a JSON payload, and then the JSON um, can then turn around and turn this back into image data on the client. You could serve that up as an image, but I just return it as part of the JSON data uh, because it's pretty small. It's not more than a couple hundred bytes. So uh, you can take the JPEG data and encode it as, as text and then uh, pass the the ID data. And then it just returns that as part of the payload as an XHR request or an XML HTTP request or uh, a JSON response, basically, of what you're getting here. And so nothing real fancy there, but the uh, return of this is what populates that that image that we have on the website right here. And so if I put in my name and that and and load this up and this test, 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 one, two, three, and hit submit, it's going to say sending the email, sending the message. And after it sends the message, it should say, thank you for sending a message. Thank you for your submission. And then in a few seconds, I'll get an email telling me I got the email. So again, it's just using a function app behind this. And this is so low um, utilization in terms of like the amount of data it processes, the amount of CPU time it uses, the number of requests I'm actually getting. This is well within the margins of the free uh, grant that Microsoft gives 
for functions on Azure. So it's a free way to run Azure functions on Azure. So if as long as you're using a low volume site like this is, then you're never going to exceed it. And you're basically going to get a free way to run some functionality or custom code that you may have written. And in this case, for my website, I'm using a free front end and free back end and everything else just works. So again, another cool free offering on Azure.